What if I told you you could create any design for your CNC or laser by simply just typing it on your keyboard? So let's break this project down. I wanna give you step-by-step step what I did here on, on how to take this AI generated image and make this project with it. So step one, I went to Kittle.com and went into their design space and clicked AI. In the left-hand text box here, I described what I wanted to create. In this case, I started with the text, a portrait of a fashionista dog riding a moped. How I got there, don't ask, but that's what I ended up with. Uh, and then so I did a couple different iterations with a couple different text um, changes, but that was the base text. And the final text that I ended up using was a male Italian fashionista dog riding a moped. And this is what it generated. Next, I resized the image. Next, I used the background remove tool to get rid of the background. So I just had the image. Next, I downloaded the image as a PNG. Next, I took that PNG image and imported it into Lightburn. Lightburn is the industry standard for uh, laser design software. So I imported it, I imported it this way just to make sure that background was removed and it would engrave the way that I thought it would, just with just the picture. So then I went back into Kittle and used the text de design presets that they have. They have some text, a lot of text designs, and Andrew, my cameraman and I came up with this saying. Once I had the text and the image placed where I wanted to, I downloaded that as a PNG, imported the design back into Lightburn, and this is the design I actually engraved. I didn't do any edits to the photo itself, I just engraved it um, how it was generated and how it imported. I did have to set the engraved settings. I set the dots per inch or DPI to 300, which is a line interval of like 0.8. That's another way to set uh, your DPI set the power to 100, and for my particular laser, I set the speed to 300. So the speed and power settings are most likely going to be different on your specific laser setup, um, but that 300 DPI should remain the same. Next, I engraved the image on a piece of eighth inch plywood. It got a little crispy on me, uh, but I just cleaned it up with some sandpaper. Now, if I was gonna make this for somebody or use this for something, I would um, run a couple tests first and really dial in these speed and power settings, but it cleaned up really well. So in this example, we generated a PNG image and used it on a laser engraver. But what if we wanted to generate a vector and use it on a CNC? All right, so let's break this project down step by step. So I went back to Kittle's AI design space. I described what I wanted to create in the text box on the left-hand side. In this case, I wanted to generate a mushroom. Someone told me mushrooms are a thing, so let's go with it. I messed around with the different art styles and wasn't getting what I wanted, so I got more descriptive. I ended up with the text, mushroom should have a distinct smooth cap and a sturdy stem. I learned the key to getting good clean vectors that will carve well is to select either the silhouette or icon art style. I did this mushroom in the icon art style. I downloaded the graphic as an SVG. I imported the file into Vectric. Vectric is my CNC design CAD CAM software. I sized the mushroom graphic to the size of my wood material. In this case, I used this painted uh, piece of plywood. Uh, it's a scrap I had laying around, but I thought that the white paint would look good uh, in the contrast with the red epoxy that I was gonna use. Then I selected the entire graphic and set up an engraving toolpath with a flat bottom depth of 0.125 using a 30 degree engraving bit. This engraving toolpath also has a clearance toolpath, which clears all the large voids uh, where it would take forever to do that with a engraving bit. So 
Uh, for that, I use an eighth inch down cut bit. Both these bits that I use, you can get on my website at andybirdbuilds.com. I exported the G-code like I would with any other CNC project and carved it on the CNC. I got some amazing details and overall it took about 40 minutes to make this design. After it was done carving, I filled it with some red epoxy. I'm using Total Boats uh, tabletop epoxy. That's just because of what I had laying around. You may be thinking, how are you gonna pour that red epoxy and not get it all over the white? And that's a great question. I was so focused on the process of generating graphic with AI that I missed a step. Now, something that you could do um, in this case is you could put a masking down and the whole trick is, is I don't wanna get rid of the white. So I could just fill the whole all the voids with red epoxy, then sand it down. But if I sand it down, then I'll sand off the white. Um, and I like the white for the contrast. So what I did is I just did the best job I could here and um, cleaned off the white the best I could. Once I cut the overall shape out, it really you really can't even tell the mess I made. Again, these workflows that I just showed you are just a tiny example of what is possible. Here are a few other ways you can use Kittle to generate these designs and ways that you can use them. Let's start with just up here at the top the AI image generator. So it's gonna take you to the, the Kittle AI interface, um, the design design area. And over here on the left-hand side, we're gonna type in, uh, we're gonna describe our image. So let's go, let's say a cow in a field. First thing that popped in my head, I know that's odd, but we're gonna do it in the digital art style now all these styles are, basically they just uh, picture them adding to the end of your description. It just helps to get it in, I guess, the style that you would want. But we're just gonna go with the first one, digital art, and see what it comes up with. Now this isn't Google search. Um, these are generating images, this is AI generating images um, based on your description. So there we go, we've got a cow in a field. So let's use that same prompt again. So there we go, same prompt, um, different art style. There's your psychedelic cow in a field. So hang with me here, because I'm gonna show you exactly how we can use these images that we generate in our um, designs, in our CNC designs, whether laser or CNC. So one thing I wanna make sure uh, everyone understands is the two different kinds of files that we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to talk about raster images and talk about vector images uh, and the differences between those. Raster images are pixels. So they're just like a picture. They're made up of millions of different tiny dots. Vector images are lines. So there's no dots, it's just uh, all, uh, all lines with the vectors, they can be scaled up as big as you want. Like you could make them huge. Uh, and with raster images, the bigger you make them, the more distorted and blurry they can get because you're making those pixels um, stretch out and they lose their detail. So the bigger you make a raster image, image, the more detail it loses. When it comes to lasers and CNC's, uh, raster images are for engraving. So uh, engraving pictures, um, engraving designs, they, uh, the laser literally engraves those dots and engraves those pixels uh, to make your image. A vector design is used um, more common with CNC routers where you are uh, removing material and you need uh, to set up tool paths along those vectors. So I just wanna make sure before I jump in and refer to these different terms that you know what I'm talking about. So we've created three raster images and two vector images here. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but let's download these as SVGs and import them into Lightburn. Lightburn is my laser design software, um, the, basically the industry standard. So you can see they've imported differently here. These are our raster images still, even though we saved them as SVGs, um, they're still solid raster images. Let's go to the, let's look at these vector images though. So vectors are just lines. So these two cows that are vectors are really, would be really good for the CNC where you set up tool paths and you could carve out the inside of it um, or you could just carve the lines. You could infill it, a lot of different options here. So that is the cow experiment. All right, so let's jump back into Kittle and I'm gonna show you a couple other tricks. 
All right, I'm kind of struggling with what to type in, what prompts to type in. So here, um, we're, we're back to the uh, find a new stunning AR, AI art. This one's kind of cool. Someone typed in abduction, Roswell, Area 51, close encounter, spacecraft, alien invasion. Now, let's do something a little bit different this time. We clicked use this image so it just brings it right in but let's say we wanted to add something to this color splatter clip art and we wanted to add a um an alien so here we can go um use the ai background remover so there's our color splatter alien coming down to abduct people all right, so let's say we want to add a bunch of these aliens in here. These color, these, now I realize these look kind of weird and out of place, but get a couple more of them in here. All their minions are coming down. There, we have five uh, aliens coming in here. And we're going to export this as a PNG. We're going to open it in Lightburn, File, Import. And here is our image. So let's just blow it way up just so we can see. So as you can see, here is, it changed it to black and white, and this is how it would engrave. You can see our aliens added in there. So the whole point of this was you could take something that's already generated and you can add your own twist to it. And literally it's, it's limitless uh, of what the designs you can come up with. All right, so the next scenario I thought of is like, okay, um, you have all these different ideas in here. You still don't know what you wanna generate. So here we're going to step backwards and we're going to do something a little bit different. So let's jump into ChatGPT here and you can see I already, I've already done this. Um, I wrote, I need 10 prompts that will generate graphics that I can engrave with a laser engraver. Uh, so I'm literally just tell it what I need and this is what it spit out. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm just going to copy and paste this to show you how it does it. Paste. I need... 10, I need five prompts that will generate graphics for holiday, for Christmas signs that I can engrave with my laser engraver. Boom. So you can see it generating. Certainly here are five prompts for creating Christmas themed graphics. That would be ideal for laser engraving. So we have winter wonderland scene, vintage Christmas ornaments, Native, uh, nativity scene, Santa's sleigh and reindeer, Christmas carolers in a village. So one thing that I've noticed with uh, Kittle's AI is you don't want to just copy and paste all of this in there because it'll overwhelm it and uh, it doesn't really come out the way. It seems like you just, you need to, it needs to be more concise than what um, ChatGPT has given us. So we're going to go with shorten these prompts just to the main details. Uh, they're the same ideas, but it just took them and, and made them shorter. And we're going to paste it in here. I still think this might be a little much, but let's just, we're gonna generate it in a digital art style, just a basic style, and see what it comes up with. Okay, not bad. So same exact prompt, um, very similar, but it got a lot closer this time. So let's take this and remove the background. And we'll put this in uh, this one here. You can shrink it down. So you just want to put it in a place where it kind of, it works. And it works there. I mean, that doesn't look like it's just been plopped in there. Uh, one thing to note is when you plop this in here, it's a really small snowman. So there's a snowman, and we could keep adding, obviously. Uh, but one thing, when you add different graphics, you'll want to highlight all of these. If you're going to want to move them around um, and resize them, you're going to want to group them together. Let me take this to our uh, to Lightburn real quick and show you what this one will look like. Boom! Now we have something that we can engrave. Um, we can change the size of, we can 
change the design any we want, anything we want. Um, but now we have a cabin with a snowman. So what are your thoughts on using AI with CNC? How do you see this going? How do you see uh, yourself using it? Leave me a comment down below. You don't need any big CNC or any specialized software in order to do this. You literally could do this process that I'm talking about with a $200 diode laser. I hope this video opened your eyes to the power of these tools. They're extremely powerful, and I believe that they're gonna revolutionize, or they currently are, uh, the way that we make our designs, come up with our CNC designs, and how we create things. When so many times we're staring at a blank screen and we don't know what to create, at the very bare minimum, these get the creative juices flowing and kind of give us an idea of, of what we can create. So this seems big and scary, uh, and you don't know if you can do it or, or how to do it, I encourage you to head to the description below, click the link, and redeem your uh, 30 days free pro trial. Kick the tires, download, uh, engrave some things, and I think you're gonna be blown away at the simplicity, and the, but also the power um, of these tools. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, be sure to do that, and I will see you in the next video.